Good morning everyone. Today, we are going to discuss a very interesting and important topic in the natural world, reproduction. We will look at different types of reproduction, explore the significance of variability, and provide some examples. Let's get started. Reproduction is essential for the continuity of species. It is the process in which organisms create new entities with certain characteristics from their ancestors. It can be divided into two major categories. Asexual and sexual. In asexual reproduction, a single organism can create a new organism from its own cells. It is possible for the newly created organism to be completely genetically identical to its parent. On the other hand, in sexual reproduction, two organisms come together to provide the genetic material for the new organism. This type of reproduction results in a slightly altered offspring from the parents, allowing for the evolution of species when changes in the environment take place. DNA copying during reproduction is of vital importance for variation in species. It enables individuals to display more resistance, or even evolve faster to changing environments. Without variations, species would be more vulnerable and unable to adjust, leading to their extinction. Variations are thus key to the survival of different species, and even for the generation of new ones. Reproduction in living organisms can be divided into two main types. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction produces new individuals from a single parent, occurring through fission, budding, regeneration, fragmentation, spore formation and vegetative propagation. In contrast, sexual reproduction involves two individuals which together produce a new individual. Variation within a species is essential for its survival, and this is largely driven by sexual reproduction. Fission is a type of asexual reproduction where only one parent is involved in producing offspring. It is divided into two types. Binary fission and multiple fission. In binary fission, the parent organism splits into two daughter cells while in multiple fission, the family divides into multiple daughter cells. Organisms that use binary fission include amoeba and paramecium and an example of multiple fission is the malarial parasite, plasmodium. Budding is a form of asexual reproduction where an outgrowth or bud is created on the body of the organism. This bud subsequently develops into a different individual which breaks away from the parent body and forms an independent individual. This kind of asexual reproduction can be observed in species such as hydra and yeast. Regeneration involves the capacity of an organism to form a new individual from a part of its body. Examples of organisms that can regenerate include hydra, planaria, and starfish. This process is distinct as it enables organisms to replace lost or damaged parts and potentially exist for an infinite period of time through regeneration. Fragmentation is a form of asexual reproduction found in some simple organisms, in which body of the organism divides into smaller pieces upon maturation and each of these pieces develops into a completely new individual. An example of this is spirogyra, an aquatic algae. It is a rapid and cost-effective method of reproduction in some simple organisms in comparison to the more complicated method of sexual reproduction. Spore formation is a typical method of asexual reproduction, in which sporangia are structures that manufacture cells called spores. Upon contact with a wet surface, these spores can develop into new organisms. For instance, fungi such as rhizopus, mucor, and penicillium utilize this process for asexual reproduction. Vegetative propagation is a technique used to generate new plants from different parts of existing plants, such as roots, stems and leaves. For example, dahlia and sweet potato are grown from roots, potato and ginger from stems, and bryophyllum and begonia from leaves. 
Vegetatively propagated plants typically flower and produce fruit sooner than those grown from seed, and vegetative propagation is the only way to propagate plants that don't produce seeds, such as roses, jasmine and bananas. Furthermore, vegetative propagation can be achieved by artificial means like cutting, layering and grafting. Flowering plants depend on sexual reproduction to generate genetically diverse offspring. A flower comprises the stamen and pistil as its reproductive parts. The stamen is the male reproductive part with an anther housing the male germ cell, or male gamete, which makes up the pollen grains. The female reproductive part is the pistil, with the ovary containing the female germ cell, or female gamete, from which the ovules originate. When both parts come together, flowers of the same type can fertilize one another and give birth to a new and diverse organism. Pollen grains are transferred from the anther of a flowering plant to the stigma of another in order to facilitate pollination, an essential process in reproduction. This transfer is often done by insects, but can also occur through elements such as wind or water. Self-pollination involves the anthers of the same flowering plant while cross-pollination involves two different plants. Pollination is thus a crucial step in the reproductive process, and a deeper understanding of it can contribute to the success of multiple species. Fertilization is the process that joins a male and a female gamete to form a zygote. This event is a fundamental element of sexual reproduction, where the cells of two parents merge to form an embryo that will grow into a new individual. It requires transfer of a pollen grain to the stigma of a flower, and a pollen tube to pass through the style and enter the ovary and ovule. There, the male and female germ cells join up and the zygote is produced. Following fertilization, the zygote will divide into an embryo, which matures into a seed, and the ovary develops to become a fruit. The male reproductive system consists of a pair of testes which produce male reproductive cells, also known as sperms, and the hormone testosterone. These testes are housed in sac-like structures called scrotum. From each testis arises a tube called vas deferens which connects to the urethra, an organ enclosed in a muscular tube called the penis, with an opening known as the genital pore. The seminal vesicles and prostate glands provide nourishment to the sperms and assist in their transportation throughout the body. The female reproductive system is a complex structure that is essential for the continuation of life. It is composed of the ovaries, which produce reproductive cells called ova or eggs, and the hormone estrogen. Above the ovaries are the oviducts or fallopian tubes, which lead to the uterus. The uterus has the opening called the vagina, which allows the ova to enter the uterus and for a baby to be born. Reproduction is an important part of sustaining life and variation is necessary for a species to thrive. There are two main types of reproduction. Asexual and sexual. The female reproductive system plays a critical part in sexual reproduction. During sexual intercourse between a man and a woman, sperm is released into the vagina, with one of them reaching an oviduct and traveling to the uterus. This sperm fuses with an egg to create a zygote, which undergoes a series of rapid cell divisions and gradually grows and develops into a fetus. The fetus then obtains essential nutrients and oxygen from the mother's blood through the placenta. After nine months, the cycle of fertilization is complete with the fetus ready to be born. Fertilized egg divides through meiotic cell division to become a multicellular blastocyst, which then implants in the uterine lining and begins to develop further. This process of gastrulation forms a three-layered embryo, establishing the basic body plan. Structures such as the brain, heart, and limbs form over the following weeks. The embryo eventually transforms into a fetus, quickly developing until it is ready for birth. The female mammalian reproductive system relies on a process of ovulation and menstruation to enable fertility. It works by an intricate communication network between the brain, 
ovaries, uterus and vagina. It starts when the hypothalamus in the brain sends signals to the pituitary gland, which in turn passes along messages to the ovaries to release an egg. Further, the uterus and vagina also receive chemical messages from these glands, which cause the uterine wall to thicken, become spongy, and line with blood vessels, to support the implantation of a fertilized egg. If the egg is not fertilized, the uterine wall breaks and is eliminated as a mixture of blood and mucus, otherwise known as menstruation. Reproductive health is an important issue with various repercussions. Sexually transmitted diseases can pose a severe health hazard. To reduce the chances of unwanted pregnancies, there are various methods available such as barrier, chemical, and surgical. Barrier methods could be using condoms, diaphragms, cervical caps, or copper teas. Chemical methods involve taking oral and vaginal pills. Surgical methods involve tying or removing a small part of the vas deferens in males, or the fallopian tube in females. It is essential to keep informed of the correct ways of preserving and protecting reproductive health.